Hello, I am Dr. Bülent Özçelik from El Istanbul Hand Surgery Group, Turkey. I would like to present a new technique in treatment of chronic reductible scopolamate dissociations. Uh, we use turbotin fixation and arthroscopic dorsal ligamentocapsulodesis for scopolamate diastasis. The carpus is complex unit of eight bones arranged in two rows that articulate with the distal radius and triangular fibrocartilage complex. The scaphoid, however, occupies an important position as the link between the proximal and distal rows. Scapulonate instability is most common form of dissociative carpal instability. Scapulonate joint is stabilized by intrinsic and extrinsic ligaments. The intrinsic ligaments, scapulonate interosseous ligaments, consist three parts, waller, central, and dorsal. The dorsal part is biomechanica biomechanically the most important part in scaphoid stability. The extrinsic ligaments, radioscopic capitat, long and short radiolinate, dorsal radiocarpal, and dorsal intercarpal ligaments act as secondary stabilizer for the sc scapulonate joint. The mechanism injury is an acute stress load on the wrist in extension, ulnar deviation, and intercarpal stagnation. Carpal instability accounts for a significant percentage of all wrist injuries and can result in chronic pain, lose of motion, weakness, and degenerative arteries if not diagnosed and treated appropriately. If left untreated, it contributes to development of osteoarthritis, defined as scapulonate advanced collapse wrist. Gluteal lines between normal wrist bones are distorted if left untreated. Secondary stabilizing ligaments must be falling in addition to the scapulonate interosseous ligament for a complete scapulonate diastasis. The lunate tends towards dorsoflexion as the scaphoid goes into flexion. Scapulonate dissociation with scapulonate diastasis, ring sign, and the foreshortened appearance of the scaphoid image is formed radiologically. Treatment choice in scapulonate injury depends on extent of the scapulonate ligament tear, chronicity of injury, quality of the ligament remnants, the reductibility of carpal malalignment, and cartilage status of the radiocarpal and midcarpal joints. For as scapulonate reconstruction techniques via open or arthroscopic approach have been described over the years. This is the arthroscopically applied complete ligament reconstruction technique described by PC Wu. In these techniques, holes are made in the scaphoid and lunate. Palmaris longus is passed these holes and tied on itself. It is very hard to use and perform these operations. Open techniques recon uh, reconstruction of the scapulonate ligaments are most widely used techniques for the scapulonate dissociations. Tendon reconstruction techniques uh, have been described uh, and performed uh, in this regard. Many different techniques we have.
Other treatment options include open polar or and dorsal capsular days. Scapulonate uh, allografts, bone tissue, bone compass grafts is used. Scapulonate inter internal or source ligament internal brace and axis techniques has been used recently. Although all these techniques provide a reliable stabilization, they all have their own disadvantages, including joint stiffness, being technically demanding, need for harvesting tendons and large incisions, donor site morbidities, and graft pullout. The surgical indications for the present techniques is chronic, reductible, Geisler grade 4, scapulonate ligament injury with accompanying over 2 mm scapulonate dissociation. The reductibility can be assessed by performing dynamic maneuvers under fluoroscopy or during arthroscopy. This technique is contraindicated in cases of irreductible carpal malignment or presence of degenerative chains in the midcarpal and radiocarpal joints. For the dimensional kinematic CT assessment can be performed preoperatively to check the reductibility of malalignment and diastasis. Uh, the technique setups uh, is very important. The arm is uh, fixed on the table under tourniquet and placed in traction tower. Synovial debridement is performed through the 34 portal with a shaver. Scopolonite, ligament, and capsule are debrided for preparation of arthroscopic dorsal capsule. Rate. Next, traction is released and hand is placed on the operating table. Three port portal incision is extended. Extensor tendons are retracted. Then the wrist is flexed and the proximal pole of the scaphoid is seen. Sturbatter system 1.1 mm white wire is introduced through the 3 4 portal incision just distal to the attachment of the scaphoid ligament to the scaphoid in the radiocarpal joint. The proposed X point of the wire on the STT joint is determined by, with a needle under fluoroscopic control. The guide wire is then directed to the anterolateral aspect of the scaphoid distal pole under fluoroscopic control so that the button doesn't impinge the trapezium. At this stage, if available, the direction of white wire is determined with a jig system. A small incision is made at the level of the wall of radial aspect of the STT joint to allow exit of the white wire and passage of the button. The superficial branch of the radial, radial nerve are identified and protected. The 1.1 white wire is moved back and forth several times to determine the exit point. Several back and forth maneuvers make this hole distinct and easily accessible. Soft tissues are debrided to reveal the exit point. Next, a six, second 0.8 millimeter guide wire is intrusive, introduced in the retrograde patient through the same hole in the uh, distal scaphoid. 
and the guide wire is then pulled from the 3-4 portal, taking the suture bottom device through the tunnel along the scaphoid. And then the first uh, button is anchored on the distal pole of the scaphoid. Next, uh, a second guide wire is reintroduced through the dorsal incision, just distal to the lunate attachment of the scapulonate ligament and directed towards the truchetrum. Its position is confirmed under fluoroscopy control. It is then advanced through the skin on the ulnar side of the truchetrum. A second incision is made at this exit site. The guide wire is pulled from the exit site together with the suture. The second button is anchored on the truchetrum. The suture button system is tension. Traction is applied by an assistant at this stage. If there is any difficulty in correcting to the scaphoid flexion and closing the diastasis, with the help of two key wires to be applied to the scaphoid and lunate, the problem of the flexion and diastasis can be solved with this device. Reduction is achieved by tensioning uh, the system and check it under the fluoroscopy after the first knot is tied. Uh, next, the reduction is checked arthroscopically, whether there is an, uh, any dissociation or get step. Finally, the arthroscopic dorsal ligament of capsuloplasty is performed according to technique described by Matur. The capsule is attached over the scapulonate ligament with this technique. With the arthroscopic dorsal capsule basis, it is possible to ensure, ensure the biological healing of the ligament. And after a while, it is possible to maintain, continue to uh, entire functional load in with this capsule. This cast is applied uh, for three weeks and then uh, replaced with removable thermoplastic orthoses worn for the, another three weeks. Rehabilitation is initiated at six weeks. Goal of the uh, the goal is uh, to maximize the patient's range of motion and functional capacity. The dart drawing movement should be included in the initial phase of rehabilitation. The super button system is positioned between the scaphoid and uh, the trucheatrum. The direction of the system prevents scaphoid flexion and maintain, maintains the continuity of the reduction. By combining arthroscopic dorsal ligamentocapsulitis technique, the aim is to achieve biological healing during the stabilization process. The major disadvantage of the, or advantage of this technique over the others are a straightforward technical application, a shorter operation time without a need of harvesting a tendon graft. The technique is performed through the mini incision with a reduced post-operative recovery time and re rehabilitation period and leads to faster restoration of function, overall decreasing risk of joint stiffening. Furthermore, furthermore, large bone tunnel 
which can lead to possible fracture are avoided. You see the uh, left side dissociation, and in the right side after the uh, suture button, and uh, it's, uh, you see uh, we solve the problem with this technique. Thank you for your uh, patience and uh, and uh, I hope uh, the techniques will help uh, your practice in, uh, in your uh, uh, clinic and thank you for Teddy to give me this opportunity. Uh, see you.